Everyone who has ever gone over the engine of their car, seen the pistons, immediately recognized them. Well, this one, believe me, is exactly the same. Well, a little bigger. This weighs about half a ton. And the volume of the cylinder in which it works is 6.5 liters. That, by the way, is a bit more than the total volume of my car's engine. Well, all right, not a bit more, several times more. And this, I repeat, is only one cylinder. And in two of the engines on Symphony of the Seas, there are 16 cylinders, just like this one. And the main difficulty here is that huge parts that sometimes weigh several tons must fit together perfectly. After all, there is so much force and heavy loads involved that the slightest deviation or inaccuracy can send the engine off the rails. And in the open sea, that can threaten a catastrophe. Therefore, manufacturing margin errors are as severe as with Swiss watches. Well, by the way, using the crankshaft as an example, you can easily understand the principle of operation of a piston engine. Look, in this position, for example, the piston would be in the upper position, and this crank pin is also up. At the same moment, the other piston is in the lower position, and the crank pin, respectively, is at the bottom. Thus, the pistons move up and down, and the shaft rotates. Everything is very simple. But the most amazing thing is that this particular shaft weighs 25 tons, its length is 26 feet, and it's made of one single solid piece of metal. Just unbelievable. By the way, there are only a few metal lads in the world that can carve a 26-foot item like this from a multi-ton bar of high-strength alloy steel. The Turner's worst nightmare here is to screw up even one detail. The crankshaft is worked on for several weeks, and it costs more than a million dollars. Ultimately, after numerous checks and tests, the crankshaft and thousands of other parts are sent to the assembly area. In a few more weeks, the engine is finally ready. And now, tests await it. If everything is in order, the engine is rolled back onto the ship, all technical fluids are drained, and it's checked again and again. In the testing chamber, the engine has already been checked out by numerous automated computer systems, sensors, and so on and so forth. But no one has done away with the good old visual control test. Everything here, again, is like in a car. We open the hood and look inside. Perhaps the most important difference between this engine and a car engine is that there are 12 of these hoods, or rather, viewing windows. Behind each of these windows is one of the cylinders and valves connected by a connecting rod to the crankshaft. If you wait for the oil to drip down from the parts, you can simply see with your eyes if any jams or other metal defects have formed during the tests. When at this stage, the inspectors give the go-ahead, the only thing left is to pack up the engine and send it to the customer. But that's easier said than done. Anyone who has ever, well, transported, say, a dresser, knows that the most necessary thing to get that done are duct tape, some styrofoam, oh, here we have some. Well, and a, a lot of bubble wrap. When moving a finished engine, everything is about the same. All protruding parts are carefully wrapped with these foam corners, sealed with tape, cling wrap, and so on and so forth. Well, in general, everything is the same as when moving furniture. There is a slight difference, though. The weight of this dresser is 180 tons. It takes a week just to get it ready for transportation. By the way, at the same time, road services and a special platform, the only one in Europe that can support such a weight and size, are being prepared for the giant's move to the port. Only here, at the very end, in the finished goods warehouse, can you begin to understand the true scale of this giant engine. Its height is about that of a three-story building. It weighs several hundred tons and generates the amount of electricity that would be needed for a small Moscow neighborhood. The actual biggest mechanical heart in the world of the world's biggest cruise ship.